Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the anatomy of the cervical plexus. This video is a collaboration between Anatomy Zone and teachmeanatomy.info. Check out the links in the video description below for some relevant articles on the cervical plexus to complement this video tutorial. The cervical plexus is a network of nerve fibres that supplies innovation to some of the structures in the neck, the head and the trunk. It's located in the posterior triangle of the neck, halfway up the sternocleidomastoid muscle and within the prevertebral layer of the cervical fascia. The cervical plexus is formed by the anterior rami or the ventral rami of the cervical spinal nerves from C1 to C4. The cervical plexus gives rise to numerous branches which supply structures in the head and neck and they can be broadly divided into two groups. You've got muscular branches and you've got branches that provide sensory or cutaneous innovation. We'll take a look first at the muscular branches of the cervical plexus. There are two large components which make up the muscular branches of the cervical plexus. First we'll take a look at the ansa cervicalis and then we'll take a look at the phrenic nerve. The ansa cervicalis is this looping nerve which arises from the spinal root C1 to C3. The ansa cervicalis gets its name from its looping structure. Ansa in Latin means handle and cervicalis means of the neck. So it's the handle of the neck. The green part of the ansa cervicalis here is the inferior root and it arises from spinal root C2 and C3. In pink, we've got the superior root of the ansa cervicalis, and this arises from spinal root C1, which you can see here. This blue nerve, which you can see on the model, is the hypoglossal nerve. So some of the fibers from C1 travel with the hypoglossal nerve. Arising from the ansa cervicalis itself are four muscular branches, which supply some of the infrahyoid muscles. What you can see here on the model is the omohyoid muscle with its superior belly and inferior belly down here. And superficially here you can see the sternohyoid muscle, which attaches at one end to the sternum and at the other to the hyoid bone. Underneath the sternohyoid muscle is the sternothyroid muscle, which you can't quite see here, but it lies deep to this sternohyoid. Coming off the ansa cervicalis are two branches to the omohyoid. At the top, you've got the branch to the superior belly of the omohyoid muscle, so this belly here. And at the bottom, you've got the nerve to the inferior belly of the omohyoid muscle, which you can see here. The second branch down is the nerve to the sternothyroid muscle. So this innervates the muscle that's hidden behind the sternohyoid. And then the one below that then innervates the sternohyoid muscle. These muscles, which are located below the hyoid bone, are known as the infrahyoids, and they act to depress the hyoid bone, which is important in swallowing and in speech. There are some additional muscular branches which are worth mentioning here. You can see these two nerves here, which split after traveling with the hypoglossal nerve, and these nerves arise from the C1 nerve root, and you've got nerves to the geniohyoid and the thyrohyoid muscle. Now the other major muscular branch of the cervical plexus is the phrenic nerve. I've switched over to a nice model here, which illustrates the origin of the phrenic nerve and its path to innervate the diaphragm. The phrenic nerve arises from the anterior rami of nerve roots C3 to C5. On this model, we've got the right phrenic nerve, and you can see how it originates from C4, sorry, C3, 4, and 5, and it passes around the lateral aspect of the anterior scalene muscle, and then it winds around anteriorly, and it passes between the subclavian artery and the subclavian vein, and it enters into the thorax via the superior thoracic aperture, descending anteriorly to the right lung root, which isn't on this model, and down the side of the pericardium 
to reach its destination at the diaphragm. You can see that the right phrenic nerve here innervates the right hemidiaphragm. The left phrenic nerve therefore innervates the left hemidiaphragm. The motor function of the phrenic nerve is to innervate the diaphragm, which is the main muscle of respiration. In terms of sensory function, the sensory fibers of the phrenic nerve supply the central part of the diaphragm, including the surrounding pleura and peritoneum, and the nerve also supplies sensory innervation to the mediastinal pleura and to the pericardium. Moving on now to the sensory branches of the cervical plexus. The cutaneous branches supply the skin of the neck, the upper thorax, the scalp and the ear. There are four main nerves that you need to know about. In this model here you can see the four spinal nerve roots C1 to C4 and you can also see the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Looking at the top nerve here, this is the lesser occipital nerve. The lesser occipital nerve is derived from the C2 root. It supplies cutaneous sensation to the posterosuperior scalp region and it commonly communicates with the posterior branch of the greater auricular nerve. It passes behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle and it ascends superiorly up the posterior border. I've just switched to a lateral view which illustrates this. You can see the lesser occipital nerve here ascending superiorly up the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The next nerve down here is the greater auricular nerve which is formed from fibres originating from C2 and C3 roots. As the name suggests, the greater auricular nerve provides innovation to the external ear, and also it supplies sensory innovation to the skin overlying the parotid gland. It is the largest ascending branch of the cervical plexus. Next down we have the transverse cervical nerve. Again, this is formed from the fibres originating from C2 and C3 spinal roots. You can see how it curves round behind the posterior aspect of the sternocleidomastoid and then it passes anteriorly in front of the muscle to supply sensation to the anterior neck. The transverse cervical nerve then pierces the deep cervical fascia and gives branches that pass superiorly and inferiorly to supply the anterolateral skin of the neck and the upper sternum. The fourth group of nerves that you need to know about are the supraclavicular nerves and these are formed from the roots of C3 and C4. The supraclavicular nerves pass behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle and provide sensation to the skin that overlies the suprascapular fossa and also to the upper thoracic region and sternoclavicular joint. I've just switched over to a lateral view to view things from a different angle and just to recap we've got the lesser occipital nerve here originating from spinal root C2. We've then got the greater auricular nerve which originates from C2 and C3 and here we've got the transverse cervical nerve which you can see winding round anteriorly and this originates from C2 and C3. And passing behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle are the supraclavicular nerves which originate from C3 and C4 spinal roots. So those are all the main branches of the cervical plexus. To find out more about the cervical plexus and to review some notes on this tutorial please visit teachmeanatomy.info and you can see the relevant links in the video description below. For more videos, check out anatomyzone.com. Thank you for watching.